Hey, what's up guys? My name is Eterno and welcome to episode 19 of Network Chat Programming. So today we're going to talk about unique identifiers. Now, this episode is actually probably going to be a lot more interesting than you think um, because I'm going to cover a few different ways. And this is this is just one of those things that's just really cool and that you should know as a programmer, definitely. Um, essentially, let's look at our problem first, right? Our, the, the problem that we have is when the client, you know, receives uh, essentially a, a packet here, you can see over here that we have um, uh, this uh, this process, right? And what happens over here is essentially we add a new server client, you know, if, if the packet starts with C, we add a new server client um, so that, of course, the server can keep track of what clients are connected to it. And over here in server client, we have this parameter called ID. And what this ID is for is to basically... I guess, differentiate clients from each other. So it is possible, okay, to connect uh, two clients from the same IP address, for example, right? There might be other people in your house that are using uh, a computer in that house that is connected to that router, to the same router. And that router will send a packet, of course, to uh, this server if, if they're both connected to the chat program. And um, that'll be from the same IP address. Now, the same port and the same IP address, that's possible as well, okay? It's not, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot less likely, but it's possible. So we can't use that as a means of unique identification. So what can we use? Well, the best way to really do this is to just generate a random number. Now, a lot of you guys might be like, okay, well, that's simple, Cherno. Why don't we just go ahead and type new random dot, you know, next int, okay? Won't that work? And we'll have to import the random class, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's just look into that, All right? So let me just, uh, this might be a bit wide for you guys. So um, I'll just call it uh, random. So in random, which will be a, a random number, you know, can't we just do that? That'll generate a random integer, right? And of course, this will generate a random integer. And that the maximum number there, right, the range of all possible values is two to the power of 32. Okay, very, very, very big number. Now, that being said, right, that being said, it's completely, it's actually possible to get the same number, okay? Now, I don't know, it's very, very unlikely. I'm just going to put it that way. It's extremely unlikely for you to actually get the same number twice, okay? In one freaking lifetime. Well, maybe not lifetime, but in one, like, operation. So, in other words, if a client connects and gets, like, the, the number, let's just say we get the random number of that, yeah? For the client, for, for the second client to connect and actually get the same number again right, is actually possible. Okay, let's be honest, in the real world, it's very, very unlikely, but it is possible. So that's a problem. Now, the second thing we could do is, of course, use uh, use um, something called secure random. Okay, so there's actually another class in Java called secure random. And if we use secure random, uh, and of course, we'll have to, uh, yeah, secure random.next in or secure random.next and specify uh, how many bits we want, you know, whatever. Um, that'll be fine. But, it, you know, like the, the problem with that is that um, <laughs> it's still going to be possible, okay? Now, let, let's just let's just go over slightly what secure random is. Secure random is a, it's a class that, that instead of generating essentially 2 to the power of 32, I don't know if they're listed here. They should, no, they didn't. It's essentially 128 bits, so it's 2 to the power of 128, okay, rather than 2 to the power of 32. Now, that is a hell of a lot more numbers that are possible from there, okay? A lot more. Um, it's a very, it's, it's a much more secure um, random number generator. That being said, again, it is possible for you to get the same number twice. Now, we're talking like freaking ridiculous, like you'd have to run this application for... Uh, I don't know, literally centuries or something to get that number twice. Okay? Now, that's because there's so many of them. Okay? Now, that being said, it's still not the safest practice to use secure random. Okay? And the reason it's not the safest practice is because however minuscule the chance, it is still possible to get the same number twice. Now, that's where Java has an awesome class um, called UU, UUID, okay? And that stands for uni Universally Unique Identifier. 
So, um, basically what we can do, and this is what we'll probably use, but I'll show you one more method because this, this might not be clear. UUID, and we can call it, you know, like our client ID or something, equals UUID dot dot random UUID, okay? And then what we'll actually have to do with that is, um, because we can't actually get like, you know, we, we could we could push it to a string or something and we could do a million things here. The, um, the, the most common sequence here, let me just, uh, yeah. The most common thing to do here is simply, you know, it's just treat it like a two, two string essentially, okay? So if, if we were to print out what this would be, just to just so you guys can see this, so system.out.println, and we'll print, you know, id to string, which will just be, we could have just put id there. Okay, uh, if we run this um, as a server here, and that crashed, let's make sure that we change this to id dot to string and we might have to adjust a few little things because I don't think that I don't think that uh, this will let us do this because it's more than just an integer here it's more of a, like a hexadecimal long or something but if we run this for the purposes of this for now um, and this is this will probably crash here but we'll see um, let's let's run that okay sweet and let's run our client Feed in a name, local host, hey one nine two is the port, hit login. Okay, we crashed. Now, check out that identifier, which we'll have to convert to a string. But look at that. This is the identifier that it gave us. Look at that. That's massive. Okay? And not only is that massive, because remember this isn't in decimal format, it's in hexadecimal format. Not only is this massive, it's unique, and it's guaranteed to be universally unique on this system. Okay? Um so that's actually our problem solved. Now, that being said, if you want to, because this is a ridiculous way of doing this, right? Like it's not 100% ridiculous. It might not be, a, it not, might not be the most manageable thing to do. These numbers are huge and they might just be unnecessary for our case, okay? And that's fine. Like that's fine, you know? If, 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 if that's unnecessary for you, then you don't have to use it. So what is the actual, what is a way that we can generate a unique identifier for the server? Well, let's make a new class here so that I can demonstrate this a bit easier. And we'll call this, uh, we'll call this uh, unique identifier, okay? Um, so public, now this has to be a static class. That's important. There can't be multiple instances of this class. So it has to be a static class. So what I'll do straight away is just make a private constructor so that we can't accidentally instantiate this class. Okay, private identifier. Oh, what have you done, Java? Not Java. Um, Eclipse. Okay, so private unique, private unique identifier. Um, and then what we'll do is make a public. Uh, what we'll do here is we'll make a private static um, int integer array here. Uh, we'll call it IDs. Okay, and we'll set that equal to new integer. Now here you must decide. Okay, you have to, in fact, you know what, I think what we could do, in fact, it's probably going to be better. Um, yeah, okay, we're not going to do it this way. What we'll do is we'll make it, we'll make it, an, yeah, okay, we'll make it an, an array list of integers. And I'll explain why in a minute. So we have this, we have this idea, IDs equals new array list integer. And then we'll set a size to it. So over here in, uh, I guess not really a size, but let's import this. We need to somehow fill it with, um, I think, um, we have to somehow fill it with, with values. So I'll make a public static, um, <clears throat> void init. Oh, in fact, you know what? No, it doesn't, we don't need that. What we could do is this might be a bit new, but we could just use static here and say that for in i equals zero, i is less than, now here you have to decide your value. So private final, pub, private static final int, uh, I guess range equals 100. Now what this range is, is the amount of possible um, identifiers that we want to generate, 
okay? So if we change this to something like uh, 100, what that will enable us to do is basically have 100 unique clients connected. Now, 100 clients might be too little, okay? Or when a client leaves and rejoins, you might want to up that value. And that's cool because we can always reuse identifiers, don't forget. But for the purposes of this, I think 100 is going to be going to be plen plenty. So I'll make a, I'll make um, a for loop that loops through, uh, well, all of this. And for each of these, I'll actually go IDs.add, and we'll just add I to it, okay? So that's going to add the numbers 0 through 99 into this IDs uh, loop. Now, what does static do? Because this class is a static class, and we should probably put this, uh, no, I'll just leave it there. Because, because this class is going to be like a static class, this will run without any method. So what we could have done is gone public, uh, static, you know, void init, right? And then we'd have to call that when our program starts, but we kind of, we kind of don't, don't need to, you know, we don't want to have to call it. We want it to just exist. And that's where this awesome static keyword with the brackets comes in. Okay. So that, that might be a neat little trick that you guys weren't aware of. Um, but yeah, so we'll add all these identifiers into it and that'll work fine. So what we'll do here is we'll go public on oh, this isn't done by the way, but we'll go <clears throat> public static int get identifier. Okay. And that will return an identifier. Okay. And this is important as well. I'll just put zero there for now. Now, this is important. What we need is two more things. We need a private int private static int index equals zero. Um, we'll start at zero, of course, and we'll return uh, IDs dot get index. Now, um, this is the other important thing. <clears throat> what this will do is this will kind of return. This won't return any kind of random number at all. This will just return zero, then one, then two, then three, then four, then five. If you want to return a random number, this is up to you. You might just want to if you, well, I don't know why, but you might want to. Um, what you can do is there's actually this awesome thing called collections collections.shuffle, okay? And you can shuffle the list, so IDs. So what that, what that will do is put them into random order. So then when you return it at an index, it will give you a random number out of that range, okay? And the important thing is it will never give you the same number again since we're incrementing the index here and we've added, you know, we haven't added a random number, we just added a bunch of numbers. So I'm gonna boost this up to 10,000 just for fun here. And what I'll do as well is I'll say if index is a greater, <coughs> if index is greater than, um, let's see, if index is greater than, uh, we'll go IDs dot size minus one, then I guess we'll set index back to zero and then we'll have to start reusing the ones that we've used. Um, <clears throat> but that being said, this should give us a random number uh, in, in the range of 10,000 or so, okay? So if we go back to uh, login, um, not login, server, sorry, and then we, we look at this, we can use this UID. I'll just comment that out. I'll leave it in there because a lot of you guys might want to use it. But what I'll also do is I'll just go ahead and call um, right over here actually in our ID. All, I'll, all I will do is call unique identifier dot get identifier. Okay. And that's it. Okay. That is it. Now we've got a million different problems here with brackets. Okay. That that's it. That's done. So let's see what that gives us. All right. So we're still running the client. Let's get rid of that. We'll start the server and we will start, uh, the, that wasn't the server that we started server main, my bad. Okay. We started the server, uh, yarn, localhost 8192, log in, and you see that we get, oh, I didn't print it to the console, like an idiot, sorry about that, bros, where's our server? Okay, so we'll go ahead and, now every time you call that, you'll get a different number, by the way. Oh, I forgot to do one thing, didn't I? Hang on, <laughs> ID, so int ID equals that. <clears throat> now, I think I forgot, yeah, once we return the index, what we want to do is kind of increment it. Now, you guys might be thinking, okay, well, then if I want to increment it, I can't just go like that, can I? Like that won't work because I've already returned something. And yeah, it won't, but what you can do is you can pop it into the bracket like this, and then 
what that will do is that will return index and then it will increment it. Now, if you were to do something like this, it would increment the variable index and then use it for the get method. But doing a post increment rather than pre-increment will make sure that it actually uh, first gets the ID at that index and then increments the variable index. Okay, sweet. So let's connect with two different clients and see what numbers we get just for fun. So server main, launch that baby, go to login and launch that. Yarn localhost 8192, login. And what you see here is absolutely nothing because I am freaking tired today or something. I don't know what I'm doing here. So let's make sure we actually print ID to the console. Otherwise, I'm just wasting your time. Uh, I'll also just put the text um, identifier next to it just so you can see a bit more clearly. All right, so let's pull up the console as well so you guys can see what's going on even. Um, so server main, launch that. Oh, it's already running. Let's go to debug and close it. Done. Okay. So server main, let's run that. Run that based. Uh, go to login and run that. All right. So yarn localhost 8192 login. All right. So there we go. We've got an identifier of 3841. Okay. Completely random number here. Cool. Done. So now let's launch another client and see what we get now. Uh, and also let's flip the, in, in debug, I'll flip, I'll flip the console view back to the server so we can see uh, it as it comes in. So I'll call this one Cherno in all caps for some reason. <laughs> Localhost 8192, log in. And you can see that what we got here was a completely different identifier, okay? And it's important to note that out of these 10,000 identifiers, unlike if we did something like new random dot next int 10,000, right? This has a, this actually has a chance to repeat itself. This method that we've just done will never, ever, ever guaranteed repeat a number ever until it gets up to 10,000 essentially once it's done this 10,000 times. Okay. Yeah. So that's pretty much it guys. Hope you enjoy this episode of, um, network chat programming. What you could do as well, just one more little quick thing is when, when a client disconnects, you could put their number back into the array. All right, that's also very possible. So when they disconnect, you simply recycle that UID. And that way, what you could basically do is ensure that up to 10,000 clients can be connected uh, with a unique ID. But that's not necessarily for our, for our application, so I won't cover it unless you guys really want me to. But anyway, hit the like button if you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, 200 likes, one video tomorrow. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.